In this video, we're going to talk about standard enthalpies and standard enthalpy changes. So we know that uh, to be an enthalpy, it has to be a heat transfer that occurs under a constant pressure. Now, we haven't talked about uh, up until now what that pressure is or what the temperature is, and really it doesn't matter. So an enthalpy change can occur at any temperature or any pressure. But the problem is, is when you're doing uh, experiments um, and you want to sort of have a set of standard conditions that everybody does the experiments under so that you can compare your results, um, you want to create a sort of a baseline standard that everyone uses. And we call this baseline standard standard thermodynamic conditions. Now, these are different from STP. So if you remember, STP in Chapter 5 had its a specific set of things. It was... Um, uh, zero degrees Celsius, one atmosphere, and um, I think that was it. So um, in this case, standard thermodynamic conditions are a little different. So the pressure for standard thermodynamic conditions is equal to one atmosphere. So that's the same as STP. However, the temperature is equal to 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. So um, that, is, that, that is a little bit different from the STP that we know. So you do have to make sure that you understand that STP for gases is one thing and standard thermodynamic conditions for your thermodynamic calculations is a, different, um, is a different thing. Now, another thing that's important is we have to define a term called reference forms. So a reference form is the stablest form of an element at standard thermodynamic conditions. And we're going to talk about in one second. On the next slide, we're actually going to introduce why, why this is important. Um, so the stablest form of an element under thermodynamic conditions is what we call a reference form. So for example, this would be, and, and you can kind of wrap your head around this. So the reason why standard thermodynamic conditions is what it is, is because it's what we're used to, right? We live at one atmosphere and room temperature, which is about 25 degrees Celsius. So for example, oxygen would be oxygen gas. Fluorine would be fluorine gas. Uh, potassium would be potassium solid. Carbon would be carbon solid. You know, um, these would be all the things. Uh, bromine would be bromine liquid. You know, iodide, iodine would be iodine uh, solid. So these are the elements as we know them uh, as they are around us. Now let's talk about why we're interested in standard thermodynamic conditions and reference forms. So to give you an idea of why we define a reference form and why we define standard thermodynamic conditions, the reason for that is because we can build on that to define what we call a standard heat of formation. So a standard heat of formation is where you take the enthalpy of the formation of any compound in its standard state. So we set the reaction up at one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. And we basically take the elements in their reference form and we combine them together to make the compound. So a standard heat of formation is where we take the elements in their reference forms and we make a compound, whatever it is, and we do this entire thing under standard conditions. So we run this reaction at one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. And we're going to get a delta H for this. And this delta H gets a special symbol. It gets a special symbol of delta H sub F. And because we're under standard conditions, we give it a little zero up top. That denotes standard conditions. And so this delta H of formation is going to equal some number in kilojoules and that is going to be the enthalpy of formation. So again, the most important thing is that we're starting from the elements in the reference form. We put them together. We make a compound, whatever it is. Uh, and the energy that's uh, the enthalpy change that's associated with this process is the standard heat of formation. And it gets that sim symbol. OK, now let's talk about why we start with the elements in the reference form. And the reason for that is because elements in their reference form have a delta H of formation equal to zero kilojoules. So if you were to have, for example, the delta H of formation for O2 gas, this is going to equal zero kilojoules. So any element in its standard state at 
in its re and, it, and in its reference form is going to have a zero kilojoule delta H formation. Now that's important because um, what we're basically starting with is we're starting with a reference that's at zero, and then anything off of that reference is going to be what we measure. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. So let's say we want to write a um, let's say we want to write a standard heat formation. So here's some examples. So let's say that we want to make silver bromide. How do we write the standard heat of formation for this? So we want to know what delta H of formation for that compound is. Well, we have to start with the elements in their reference form. Okay, so what are the elements and what's their reference form? Well, silver, that comes as silver solid in its reference form, and bromine comes as bromine liquid in its reference form. Now, typically, uh, and this is important when you write these things, typically they're written for one mole of the compound. So in this case, you might be tempted to do Br2 plus two silver gives two silver bromide. That's not how we normally do this. And the reason for that is because we're generally interested in what is the delta H per mole of silver, of silver bromide. So instead of having it be a two there, we're gonna put a one half in front of the Br2. And that's just so that we get a one mole, a single mole of product for the silver bromide. Now let's look at this from a thermodynamic, um, let's look at this from a graphical perspective. So we remember the delta H of formation for this is equal to zero, and the delta H of formation for this is equal to zero. So if we set up a chart where we have uh, reaction progress on the bottom, and we have delta H naught up here, and the reason why I'm putting delta H naught is because this is all taking place under standard conditions. So what is a heat of formation? Well, a heat of formation, we start with our reactants, and in all cases, the reactants are going to be at zero. Because a re, uh, an element in its reference form at standard conditions is always going to be at zero. So no matter what reaction you run, it could be making silver bromide, it could be making methanol, it could be making ethanol, because of the way that we set up standard heat of formation, you're always going to be starting at zero because you're always starting from the elements in their reference form. Then when you run the reaction, you're going to look to see where the product is. So in this case, it turns out that the product, that the product is somewhere down here, and this is at minus 99.5 kilojoules. And this is the silver bromide solid. So you have your silver solid and you have your one half Br2 up here. So the change here, or the delta H of formation, is going to equal this difference of minus 99.5 kilojoules. So you know that silver bromide is negative 99.5 kilojoules from zero kilojoules. Um, that's why we define it this way. So uh, because of the elements being in their reference forms being always at zero, we now know where something sits relative to a common reference point, which is zero which is the element. So the delta H of formation for this is going to be minus 99.5 kilojoules. And you can write this for any, um, you can write this for any reaction and set this up the same. And actually what we do is we look these up in the appendix. So if you look up appendix C in the textbook, you're going to find a whole range of standard heats of formation. Um, for all different compounds. And these are all going to be the same thing. These are all compounds that were, th this number that you're looking up is the number of, of th the amount of heat energy that's either added or released when you take the elements in their reference form and go to making the compound and under standard conditions. Now what we're going to see in the next video is we can actually use these standard heats of formation to actually figure out a delta H for a reaction. Um, and that's, that's going to be because all of these are referenced to the same zero. So that's what we're going to take a look at in the next video.